Grandma's Kitchen. There's a fiddle tone and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and a singing. There's friends leaving or family landing and the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. In Grandma's kitchen. It ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen. Grandma's kitchen. Okay, I'm on. I think I got it. How's everybody? I, um, well, just a little bit of technical difficulties as per usual and one of these days I'm going to get it right. So hello everybody. It's Mary Janet here in my Cape Breton kitchen and um, today we're making cream cheese tarts. Pretty simple, basic, easy. And uh, for starters, all I want of you right now is to uh, turn your oven to 375 and take your tarts out of the freezer. Maybe some of you are already ahead of me, but take your tarts, I'm just gonna go right along with you. I just wanna clarify things because I know that some people they just want the recipe and they want to make it themselves. And you know what? That's all well and good and that's fine. But for me, on these Sunday afternoons, I just want to bake with you. And I'm doing everything at the same time, I hope, as you are. So for those who just want the recipe, you know, just wait until later and you can go and find it. But for now, we're just going to go... You're going to visit with me and we're going to make these tarts together just from scratch. So I'm going to do three things right now. I am going to turn my oven to 375. I'm going to take the tarts out of the uh, freezer and um, I'm going to wash my hands because I'm they're sweating from this trying to get this camera going. Okay, thank you everybody. Be right back with you.
Okay, how's that? You're all nice and clean and everything's good. Okay, so I am, um, the, the, I use these tender flake ones usually, but it doesn't really matter, you know, there's, the, the, the store brands are absolutely just fine. I just usually use these. So basically all I do is when I take them out, I just keep them at room temperature. It says six until uh, to 10 minutes. I um, just do the six minutes. Why prolong it? <laughs> You know, I leave them all in the little tart the foil, um, even when I serve them. Okay. Oh, oh. That one wants to come out. There we go. We're just going to leave them aside for six minutes and guess what I'm gonna set the timer I need to do that okay so we have a few minutes to spare um, I was gonna tell you um, a number of years ago I worked at EMM law in Port Hawkesbury a legal firm and uh, you know how the gals and the guys are sometimes, you know, not so much the guys because, but the wives kind of do the, some of the baking, not all the time, but uh, a lot of the time we just take turns every now and again, bring a little treat into work. I'm sure you've all been there and you've always d done that. I know I have, I love doing that. But anyway, girl that I worked with, Kelly Burke, one day she brought these cream cheese tarts in. Oh, just one bite and I really thought I died and went to heaven. They're just so good. Pretty much finished them in two bites. They're so delicious. But what they're really good for is how many times, you know, we here, we have a, a, a crowd in. Um, the recipe uh, will make 24 tarts and you may choose to uh, to just make half of this recipe. That's fine and that's that's totally up to you. But uh, I usually make the 24. Now, I'll probably give some of these away, no doubt, because I don't need another one on this hip or this hip, but that's the way it goes. Usually what I do, so many of you are doubling the recipes and you're uh, going around and leaving little gifts on doorsteps. You're still doing that and it's just wonderful. And uh, when I, well, usually in, in the early in the week, on Monday or Tuesday, I'll make the recipe that I'm going to make the following Sunday. And uh, then I, ha I have a couple of places that I like to drop them off to so that they're not in front of me. Um, so usually I'll, I'll drop it off to the postal workers because they're there every day and all of that. And to our little local grocery store, I, I drop some off there and uh, just so they can have it when they need to have a cup of tea, right? And uh, I don't know where I'm gonna put them today, but I'll keep some, of course, and um, somebody will benefit from them today because I've already made these early in the week so that I could take a picture and uh, have it with the recipe and, and tell you what's uh, happening um, in coming up the next Sunday. And, okay. So I have a little reminders here for myself because I'll be forgetting things. But uh, the aprons are ordered and will be here uh, delivered this week I'll, I'll get them here either Tuesday or Wednesday and I, I only ordered a few I didn't know uh, 
you know how many and I've had to send another for another order and and uh, they're on their way too so thank you all for doing that um, it's so exciting just to have an apron with tunes and wooden spoons and I've probably told you this before but what's so special to me about tunes and wooden spoons is the first day that I was making the cinnamon rolls uh, my uh, son uh, in Dartmouth no not Dartmouth that's our daughters in Dartmouth uh, Heron Cove the one that's pregnant and didn't have the baby yet she was due yesterday I'll let you know <laughs> And, um, but our son who is in Oakfield near the airport in Hal near Halifax, uh, he's got two uh, daughters, he and his wife Kelly, and um, they, my granddaughter Anna uh, said that first day after the cinnamon rolls, she said, Grandma, you should name your next page Tunes and Wooden Spoons if this is going to keep on going well holy smokes <laughs> it's it's certainly kept on going and uh, so everything is named tunes and wooden spoons so now we have the apron and we've been working on on the, uh, the what the logo would be uh, and I, I love these these are Miss Brenna's um, uh, I love Cape Breton uh, .ca so I didn't want to put the map of Cape Breton on mine because that that is that is hers. And if you want something with Cape Breton on it, I think you should honor uh, Brenna with that. And she's been getting some orders, and that's wonderful that you're supporting the local people. But um, mine, will, will if you go to the website, you can see it's a it's a nice cup of tea with steam coming out of it, which represents our the, the tea we share. And. Uh, tunes and wooden spoons in there and there's a little musical note on in the on the d of the the name wooden and there's a wooden spoon there so that design was worked on by my daughter margie and my niece margie beaton the redheaded fiddle player and then the final artwork was uh, uh completed by miss brenna who does uh to, who did this apron and we've just submitted it and they run off the apron so i'll have it this week so i'm so excited about that and uh you guys made that happen so thank you very very much oh look i talked for those darn whole six minutes just hold on a second now if i don't turn um that timer off it'll keep ringing and ringing okay i just have regular roll a metal cookie sheet and all 24 tarts will fit on mine pour across and what I'm gonna do okay so I'm gonna cook them 10 to 12 minutes I think I'm gonna I think I'd rather do the 12 minutes because it's, it's a nice a crispier pastry which I like and you know somebody was saying well why did you make your own pastry and do it oh, that's a lot of work. Well, I'm just not, I'm into kind of easy, really. And maybe, yes, it's more healthy. So you want to go ahead. You can use my pastry recipe and maybe a four inch uh, cookie cutter would fit into each muffin tin. Go for it, honest to heavens. But you know, these are already in place and tender flake, it's good product. Okay, here they are. I'm going to put them in the oven for 12 minutes. Okay. So if there's any questions, some of my kids are out there. My, uh, my son. Brennan, he's uh, he's usually right there at the helm today. But um, as you know, oh my God, Nova Scotia has been hit so hard the last while, and lately with the military helicopter going down and us losing some special people. So today, 
I have my teacup already and it's my Nova Scotia tea teacup in memory of those lives lost and uh, we just have to keep on going and go forward and just we just are strong and we're going to keep on putting one foot in front of the other right and uh, it'll, it'll just have to be okay so well, I'm going to start the filling and what I'm going to do when that 12 minutes is up and you can do the same when those tarts are are uh, coming out of the oven I am going to stick my pan in the fridge and uh, so that they'll cool down some before the filling is ready and um, you guys can do the same you know uh, usually I don't put the filling in unless they're, they're cooled off but because we're doing this we kind of have to rush it you do whatever you have to do and God knows I've rushed them before so okay we're gonna start the, uh, the filling, okay? So I have a um, whole brick of cream cheese. This one is 250 grams. Now, one thing I didn't tell you guys, but hope to God, anybody who's, who works with cream cheese, you know you have to have it at room temperature. And by room temperature, for me, I took it out last night and left it on the counter overnight. That's what I do. It doesn't hurt it one little bit. If you didn't do that and you have a hard uh, thing of cream cheese, just take it out of this, put it on a plate, put it in for 20 seconds in the microwave and just feel if it's kind of uh, soft that you're going to be able to beat. Perfect. You might be a little bit behind. And I apologize for not thinking of that. You know, you know sometimes there's just people who are just new to baking and using this confinement time to learn something different. Okay, so I have my cream cheese. I'm just gonna cut it up here and put it in my bowl. I have a funny story to tell you. <laughs> uh, my, my daughter Tammy in Fort McMurray sent me a text and you know that they've um, had that evacuation. Um, my other daughter, Margie, who was there, was evacuated, but, but she's been reinstated and her place is fine now. Um, but um, uh, my daughter and my grandson, Jake, were there uh, helping out and giving out like, bottles of water at, at the volunteer center uh, helping people and uh, just you, you they just opened the back door and put the, the product in the, the, and you know my daughter had her face mask on and gloves and all of that sort taking all of those precautions and uh, here the lady in, in the back seat I know her name is Tina she lives in Calgary but she was there helping her sister perhaps because of the flood and she said, oh my gosh, it's Tammy, because her and Tammy are friends. And she was saying, this is the one I was talking to you about. That's the, the daughter of the cinnamon roll lady. <laughs> oh my God, I laughed. I laughed so much at that. I thought that was pretty funny. I, so I've become the cinnamon roll lady. <laughs> so, in a nice deep bowl, I better stop talking, sorry. A, a nice deep glass bowl. Um, oops, I lost some here. Uh, put your cream cheese. Are you hearing that music? That th those. This is my um, my niece, Margie Beaton, one who helped with the teacup design, and her sister Don Beaton, and of course they're identified by their red hair. This is their this CD called, uh, I've had it on before another time, but I don't, didn't have it just them that particular day. Uh, a Taste of Gaelic, and uh, it's a beautiful CD. So one cup of white sugar, okay?
This is a Pamper Chef, Pamper Chef um, container dish. Eight cup, used all the time. And I told you that last week, four cup measure. But remember I was telling you that Sonia Boyd sent me two nice parcels of things that are just wonderful. And my daughter Tammy, like 15 or 20 years ago, she used to sell Pamper Chef and I still have those products. They never broke. They are phenomenal. Well, guess what? She has reinstated and my daughter Tammy is now selling Pamper Chef just this, just this week. And her first party is this week. If anybody wants to, to go there and support her. And she's, she, she went on Pamper Chef, um, under Sonia Boyd. Here's Sonia, uh, as, as took her on. I'm pretty sure that's right. But anyway, and, um, so there's a party on there and there's on, I, oh yeah. And my website is up and running tunesandwoodenspoons.com and there's a whole bunch of stuff there but under the links everything that's so precious to me that I love everybody that's on there there's about five or six rows of links that my son went and put on for me and uh, so I think Tammy's might be the first one there for Pamper Chef and you can order online and deliver anywhere in Canada and uh, anyway I know that's up to you and you may have your own favorite Pamper Chef a consultant and do what you need to do but I'm just putting a little uh, word out there because I, I'm proud of her for doing that okay and a teaspoon of lemon juice now you might have fresh lemon juice that's good too I'm just doing the easy way <laughs> teaspoon it's gonna make some noise here your electric beater and I'm going to beat this up until it is nicely combined okay wash this off because now I'm going to do my dream whip. Can hear that tune? That's a Strats Bay. That's my tune. That's a Mary Janet's Fancy written by Don Beaton. And if you if you were to be able to hear it, I can hear it. I'm step dancing on there. They had me come into the studio when they were recording it years ago, when I was lighter on my feet. And uh, it's funny that that came on just now. That's awesome. tarts doing three more minutes okay we have enough time I think to do this so you're gonna get your dream whip some people were asking about dream whip you know what okay this is dream whip for people who don't know about it it's a powdered meat mil um, milk product but it's got lots of things in there perhaps it's not the healthiest thing in the world and uh, you know people are more concerned about that than than perhaps I that I should be too. But anyway, I offered as an alternative, just put a half cup of whipping cream in, in a bowl and put a, big, a teaspoon of vanilla in it, and that should be fine and to mix with this stuff. So anyway, one envelope of, of Dream Whip. And there's 
another recipe out there as well that has eco brand milk and somebody shared it in the comments section there uh, when I when I put the ingredient list in you guys make what you what you want okay now um, half a cup of, uh, of cold milk this is a little pampered chef quarter cup measure so we're going to put a half a cup of milk in here and oh, I think it says a half a teaspoon of vanilla something like that it's just vanilla can't hurt okay okay I'm just not gonna mix it right now because uh, the uh, the tarts it's just going to ring and uh, before I put them in the fridge I'll bring it over here so you can see them see if it compares to what you're doing Okay, so, you know, they don't really change in color very, very much. They are lightly browned around the edges that I can see. So I'm just gonna slide that into my fridge, put it on top of everything, so what if it's hot, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. You're not gonna melt anything. Luckily, yesterday I cleaned my fridge, so we had a lot of leftovers in there. We're good. All right, we're gonna do this for a couple of minutes until it's nice, soft, and peaky, okay? I'm gonna put it on high. for okay it's nice stiff peaks so now we're going to put the dream whip in with the cream cheese
So now I'm just going to put this on low. I just want to mix it just till it's blended, okay? Perfect. That's it. That's it for the filling. You don't have to bake this or anything. It's kind of a cheater's cream cheese uh, cheesecake, right? Made a mess here. Usually, I don't know what you guys do, but when you're beating up things, I always do mine in the sink and then any splashes. Okay, set aside. Okay, now I'm just gonna get my fruit ready, whatever you want to use. I'm just gonna cut up my strawberries along with you. I actually already washed my, my strawberries. So you can put anything you want on the cream cheese, um, on the tarts, whatever you like. These aren't the best. But anyway, I just, I'll probably cut them again because they're too big. I just like to have, you know, some nice color on the top. A little green, a little red, a little blue. So all I have here is two strawberries. I'm not counting anything. You know, just see what you have. I have a few raspberries here, which I've already washed. And I have some blueberries here. And uh, you can see that, and some raspberries. And uh, I have, um, when I made these, um, I made the cream cheese tarts earlier in the week, I bought a little can of mandarin oranges. I just like the, I love mandarin oranges anyway. But um, there's some a little bit of water, <clears throat> juice in that I'll take out. Okay, and so that's that's all ready. And I love the green of kiwi. You have whatever you want on it. Now, <clears throat> this is always what I put on the top, usually, any combination of any of these fruits. But um, there was one time I, um, I guess the grandchildren, I forget which grandchild was here at the time, but, um, I made some caramel, homemade caramel sauce. <clears throat> and I also have some homemade, the homemade chocolate sauce that I make. Uh, I'm not, you know, doing that today. But um, to tell you about Mama, the, the lady that raised me, you know, she, she went, okay, she was born in 1902. And, uh, Perhaps when, I'm thinking maybe when she was 20, so let's say like 1922. Um, so many of the ladies here in Cape Breton went to work in the Boston States. That's what how she would re re refer to it. She worked in the Boston States and worked for, you know, like a wealthy family. And, um, <laughs> gosh, I remember her telling the stories, but they would, they would live like in the upper level of, of the, of the, you know, these grand homes. And, uh, they were so thankful for the work and she, she would work with a lot of, a lot of the people that she worked with were from Ireland that, that came to Boston and, and work there as well. 
but mama, that's who I, I called her mama because she was my mama. And uh, she was the dessert lady. That's how she ended up being the dessert lady and had had to, to learn how to do things. So some of her things that she made were very versatile. And uh, one of them was her, her chocolate sauce that, that I use from time to time. And uh, another was a chocolate pudding, but it was a versatile pudding. And uh, we're gonna make that, in a couple of weeks, we're gonna make her versatile chocolate pudding that, um, it's not just chocolate pudding. It's vanilla pudding, it's banana cream pie, it's coconut cream pie, and it's chocolate pudding. Delicious. And uh, certainly a family favorite here. Okay. So we have our toppings all ready. I'm gonna put the kettle on. I have to pop back in here. Can you hear that song? Gaelic singing? That's my grand uncle, uh, Finley Cameron, lived in Boysdale. And when they come in on the chorus, uh, I can hear Mama. It was probably in our living room down in Mabu. And Sarah Ann, uh, my grand aunt, was there too. They're all singing. They were fluent Gaelic speakers. And it's just so nice to hear that, that Don and Margie honored their, their talent and memory by putting it on their CD, just a, a little portion before they joined in with um, tunes. And May is, is Gaelic month uh, as well, so that's kind of neat that that's playing. Okay, I'm gonna check the tarts and see if they're cool enough. I think they will be fine. I'll get ready to do that. Oh yeah, they're perfect, they're perfect temperature. This rack, Pamper Jeff. <laughs> Just like my parchment paper, I love Pamper Jeff. I don't know, it's so nice to have something that's a quality product. When you're in the kitchen and you, you, you do your baking, like the stoneware pan and the pizza pan, oh, I don't know what I'd do without it. Actually, I'm gonna go get, I don't want to pile too much on this. I'm gonna go get the other, God bless Sonia. She sent me two of these racks. Okay. These, stack, these are actually stackable. I'm not gonna do that for now. Okay, I hope you're all at the same time as I am. Okay. Let's get myself a little better organized here, space-wise. You know, if you really want to make these, you know, put them nicely in there, like you could probably put them in a in a pastry bag and squeeze it out and make it look all beautiful. <laughs> I just do this. It's just a heaping tablespoon. 
There should be enough for the 24, sometimes it's 23. And really, you're gonna put the fruit on it anyway. It's a beautiful, beautiful sunny day here today. Hi. I think winter is finally over. I actually got my winter tires off the car this week. So, we'll forge forward. So many summer events and things are canceled, but little by little, places are opening up some spaces, you know, in some of the provinces. So we'll get there, we'll get there. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna set my tea, the kettle boiled. Now, just go around and refill those that could add a little extra. Now, what I find about these, maybe, maybe two days. After that, the, the, you know, the, the pastry gets soggy. So you, 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 you need to do them up fresh. But they, as you can see, they don't take very, very long. Some of you may know that I used to teach dancing back in the day, but Melody Cameron from Mabu, she's married to my cousin, beautiful step dancer and beautiful dance teacher. Anyway, she has just launched her, her online step dancing uh, classes. Just in Facebook, look for Melody Cameron and you just, you just, you know, pay per lesson. I was kind of looking at it. And, uh, you know, there's some bonus things there, but what kind of shoes, etc. Great thing. Actually, I shared it on my own personal page. And you can look at that. I, I think I set it to public. There's something you can do. You can learn how to step dance Kate Breton style. Okay, there they are. Now we're gonna add some pretty fruit. You 
know that might there's probably people out there that are just wonderful chefs and you know you can you can just use strawberries if you just want strawberry and and you know what else is really nice with this which I did one time there's um if you know how to make a lemon glaze you know like with uh, some lemon juice and a little bit of water and a little bit of sugar and a little bit of cornstarch I can't remember um, the amounts I don't it's easy to google and find out but um, you know once you put the fruit on you can drizzle it with with that uh, lemon glaze it's really nice too this is just so a little more simple but I say if you want to do something pretty special some of these I'm just putting on big I might not put all the other fruit on there you're going to use it all up. Some of the pieces are small. Okay. And I don't know how many raspberries I'll have, but I'll just stick one on every one. Isn't it hard to get nice when you get raspberries? You pretty much have to use them that day. They, they're they not a keeper. They don't keep for long. Oh, Don and Margie have a little surprise track at the end. I can hear them. And it's just an a cappella step dance number, the two of them dancing. Pretty nice. Oh my God, there are 24 raspberries. I did not... I did not count that out. That is too funny. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, blueberry. Got two more fruit to go. There now. Yes. don't have enough mandarin oranges to do the whole lot but there'll be some see they're kind of healthy they got fruit and you gotta have a little green green for the Irish oops If I don't get to my tea soon, it's going to boil. So we're just going to do that much for now. And this is my mother's dish. She passed away in 1955. The, the lady, the, my, my biological mom from cancer, as I've told you before. And, and uh, this was some of her special things she set aside for her children or five children. So I'm gonna pick one. I think I'll pick this one. I'll bring it over to you. There, doesn't that look delicious? And I 
know uh, my daughter just asked me, can you freeze them? I do not know. I really don't know how they freeze. Somehow I don't think you can. That means you have to give them away. Um, I, I'm just thinking, you know, would you freeze a cream pie? I don't think so. I don't know if it, I'm, I'm, I would think that the um, the crust would get soggy or something. And but you know what? If you do, and if you freeze in, and and when you thaw them out and they turn out okay, that's wonderful. You know, maybe if they had a different you know base, and maybe if it was a graham wafer base or an Oreo cookie base maybe they would I, I I do not know the answer to that I've never frozen any of them uh, before made them lots okay, I'm gonna pour my tea and I'm gonna bring you over and we'll have our little visit Turn this music on again. I'm going to take you with me. We can have a little. I did. Tammy's texted me and put some music on. I just did, Tammy. Just give me a chance. I didn't have time. Oh, yeah. And she's also asking, I guess some people are asking about Cool Whip. You know what? If that's what you have, use it. I I don't stray far from a recipe. This one calls for Dream Whip. Cool Whip, I really don't know. Um, I know my cousin Sherry Campbell made them one time with Cool Whip and I think that they were okay. So yeah, you probably can. And uh, I think I already said, you know, if you're looking for a healthier alternative, use some whipping cream, whip up a half a cup and put teaspoon of vanilla in that might work as well okay hope you have your good dishes out today cilantro oh that's good you know i don't know if everybody does that but that first little sip you take a little sip And you do that outtake of breath. I think a lot of Cape Bretoners, especially those of, of uh, Gales who are Scottish descent, that's a thing. That's a thing that we do. We have an intake of breath when we're talking, yeah, yeah. I do it. I know it. I do it all the time. And, I, and you know what? I'm proud of it. I'm proud of that we do those kinds of things. So, how are you all? I hope you're all doing well and surviving all of this that's happening. And, you know, I, like I tell you every week, messages mean the world to me. And I know that there are some of you that are out there and, and, and you share some of the struggles that you have, or there's more going on in your life than, um, COVID and 
the tragedies that have befallen us and you know there's people who have had people who have passed away and there's no closure because there's no wake or funeral and families can't come and and there's more people there's people uh, just recently um, just privately an um, inbox message from a lady whose husband has been diagnosed with cancer and you know this is just a little afternoon uh, with me talking to you and for some in some way it's a comfort and I'm I'm so glad I'm so glad that we have each other and certainly reach out at any time and there's there's wonderful people out there who are singers and and who who share their songs with me and I listen to them and they're they're amazing amazingly talented people and um, life is good and we'll get through this and you'll get through this and you know reach out at any time if I can help you I'm here I'll listen and uh, I'll respond but I'm slow at responding and I apologize for that but sometimes I just don't have that time okay I'm just gonna look at some little reminders that I had here for myself I think yeah Thanks, Kelly Burke, for introducing me. I don't know if I should say thank you. <laughs> no, I sincerely think Kelly's a wonderful person, wonderful baker, and, and she she uh, introduced me to that. And um, yeah, the CTV interview with Ben Mulroney went good, and I invited him to have a cup of tea here in Cape Breton sometime. You never know, he might come, who knows? Can you imagine him sitting in my little Cape Breton kitchen having a cup of tea? <laughs> and this week, um, one of the local papers here, the reporter in Port Hawkesbury, Jake Boudreau, who uh, did the interview with me. But there was there's one little thing, and, and God love Jake. He's, he was just a sweetheart. Um, when I, we were, we were um, messaging back and forth, but... I didn't know when he was interviewing me that he was going to put the recipe in the article. And I just, I just want to tell everybody, you know, there are, there's some recipes out there that are wrong, but attributed to me for the cinnamon rolls. And I just, and gosh, didn't, isn't that the recipe that went in the reporter? It didn't come from my website or Facebook page or whatever. And it has the, um, it has certain measurements that, uh, you know, for, for the cinnamon cinnamon and all of that that's not the same as mine because I don't measure that part and it has the oven temperature as 450 good lord even 425 is pretty high which that's the temperature that I use but uh you know I have a propane oven and I have a stoneware pan so sometimes a lower temperature is better for you guys but never 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 450 and that's in there and it said for 20 minutes even at 425 uh, 18 minutes is what my oven takes and for many of you it's 15 minutes at 400 it do, all depends you guys have to learn how to judge your your own uh, temperatures in your ovens but anyway Jake is going to um, correct that on uh, on maybe the Facebook page I'm not sure or maybe maybe in the reporter next week at Fort Hawkesbury but very kind to do that and he did such a nice uh, we had such a nice chat on the phone and Anyway, it's just, you know, the way I just want to, and anybody in the, in the area that gets the reporter, just know that those corrections are going to be uh, dealt with. And because that, don't go by that. Don't put your oven to 450, please. Thank you. Okay, just wanted to address that. And uh, Pampered Chef, yes, uh, I, I mentioned the link. And, oh yeah, I wanted to mention something else. All of you would remember... Well, you're not old as me, but I remember as a young, a youngster, uh, it was a big happy day when the Raleigh man would come to your house and bring all these lovely things like vanilla and, and, um, the hot salve, which I didn't like, but they would, they would be put on your chest if you had a cold and it was the, the fix for many things, but Anyway, Watkins, a couple of people that are listening uh, are on my Facebook page from maybe, I don't know just where they're all from, but some are um, uh, 
Watkins representatives, but a, a, a gal that I used to teach dancing to many, many, many moons ago, uh, Josephine uh, McCachran Carlton, uh, lives in Mabu, is a Watkins consultant, and uh, actually she was here at the house, and uh, she dropped uh, the Watkins uh, little catalog. She didn't tell me to put it on, on the video today, uh, but I wanted to order this stuff. I was so excited because it, they've got the real good vanilla and um, the, 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 the spices and the prices are really good. So find a consultant in your area and if you want to get something that's really good, I, I just can't wait to order it, but there's lots of good things on there. And oh yes, and my son uh, put that link on my uh, website under the links. You just scroll down through all the links and you'll see that there. But if you want some good product like that, I just, uh, I, I love that. And I love that they're not exorbitantly priced. Really good things, especially, I'm especially looking forward to the vanilla and um, some of the spices. So have a look there if you like, if you're from around here uh, and support Josephine. And um, taste test time. I better be quiet. We'll talk about what's happening next Sunday. Mm. I hope you're all having a bite. I'm gonna have one more bite. Mm -hmm. They're tasty little morsels. Don't have a napkin, sorry. I'll just have to use a clean it. Okay, so next week, I'm going to be making two things that kind of go together. You decide which of the two that you just want, and um, but I'll be making both. And I, I, I believe the only way I can work it is similar to when I made the um, the bread, where I had to. Um, you know, go live and then come back maybe in an hour. So we're gonna do that next Sunday because I am going to make a homemade chocolate cake um, next Sunday, a homemade chocolate cake. Uh, it, it's a layer cake. So the original recipe was for a three tier, but it's just way too big. So we're just gonna do a two tier. And what you need for that, um, aside from sugar and eggs and your flour and all of that stuff, um, you're going to need cocoa, powdered cocoa, and um, yeah, the other thing that you wouldn't have in, buttermilk. You're gonna need buttermilk. And don't ask me about substitutions. I, I just go by the recipe, but you have to have buttermilk to do it. And the thing is that what I'm making with it is a boiled brown sugar frosting. And if you just want the brown, the brown sugar boiled frosting portion, well, you'll have to watch my Facebook page. And, um, you know, the first part will be the chocolate cake. If you're not interested in that, just, or just, just make your own, you know, cake from, from a mix if you want. And you, cause you're just interested in the, in the boiled icing that's fine too. But this is a really nice, um, uh, nice decadent chocolate cake. Uh, let me look at the ingredients here. Flour, white sugar, cocoa, baking soda and baking powder, salt, uh, three eggs, a cup of buttermilk, some water, some vegetable oil, just a small amount of vegetable oil, some vanilla. And um, as always, that the recipe is posted right after uh, going live, as will the cream cheese tart recipe. You all know it now. For the, for the, um, and, and I'm just going to, what? Uh, yeah, for the cake, you'll need two nine inch round um, cake pans. 
or if you just want to put it in a tube pan, that's fine too, but the, 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 the length of time that you have it in the oven might be a little bit longer. You, you decide on that. I, I, I'm just making what I would make, okay? And uh, two round inch, uh, uh, nine inch ones. I have both eight inch ones and I have nine inch ones. And I, of course, I use uh, parchment paper on the bottom. And there's a real slick little um, tip you know how when you make when you make a layer cake and and there's a mound on the top when it when it raises up in the middle and it's it's uneven and you have to kind of I used to be able to just slice across the top to make it kind of flat. Well, there's a trick that you can do with paper towel, wet paper towels and foil wrap that you kind of put around the um, the cake pan and it all raises at the same level. And uh, the reason that there's a mound in the middle is because when you cook your cake, the, um, of course, the outside cooks quicker than the middle part. And the middle part is, is still raising before it gets cooked. So that's why you end up with a mound at the top. So this little trick is, is uh, we'll do it next week, but you have to have paper towel and you have to have foil wrap and uh, you can make it just the old way and just cut off the mound on the top and that'll be fine but if you want to to do it that way i'll show you that trick it's it's really slick and, and you you have a pretty flat cake and also the outside is just as baked as the inside it's doesn't that the edges aren't really hard so it's it's that's really nice uh so for the boiled frosting you're going to need a double boiler and uh, if you don't have a double boiler and you just have two pots similar in size, as long as you have, you know, you can put an inch of water on, on the bottom and, and if the, the, the pot is kind of tippy on the top, you're gonna be able to hold the pot in place and while, you, um, while you're beating the, um, the boil frosting, okay? Um, so for that, you're gonna need three eggs and you're gonna need uh, brown sugar. You're gonna need some cream of tartar. Uh, it's expensive, cream of tartar is expensive, but you're gonna need like a half a teaspoon. Maybe you have a good neighbor that has some. Uh, and just some water and some vanilla, that's it. So if you're interested, you can certainly tune in next week for that. I'll be putting those ingredients up. Um, don't know if I'm making the cake so you can show you a picture of it, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll see. I, I might, I might do that. But uh, I think I have, that's everything. But um, anyway, the aprons. Thank you all very, very much for so many of you who ordered it. And if anybody from around here wants one, you don't have to order them online. Just just give me a, a dingle and or send me a, a message to tunes and spoon tunes and wooden spoons at gmail.com um, and just come to the house. I can leave it out on the deck for you and you can e-transfer me uh, just from around here. So the no delivery uh, needed there. And I uh, should have them on Wednesday. They're in Halifax and they're gonna be sent out to me. So uh, I'm so looking forward to that. And um, I, I, yeah, I was gonna say, I know that there's, there's a few little families out there that the, uh, their children come in. They, they have tea with me with special cups and stuff like that. So I hope that there's little girls out there and little boys that are having a little little tea party and, and uh, some cookies or some cream cheese tarts. So here's to you and I'm going to say slancha. If everybody can say slancha, and it kind of means to your health. So um, here you go people. Uh, have a wonderful week. Thanks for, for joining me and uh, I... Uh, I love you and to love one another. Okay? Take care. Bye-bye.